Hi. So one of my favorite filmmaking techniques is when filmmakers use a frame within the frame, and they use these frames to convey different ideas or feelings. For those that don't know what I'm talking about, here are a few examples. Understand? Great. I think. I have no idea if you understood. Anyway, to make this video, I watched a lot of different films. What I discovered was that this technique isn't as widely used as I thought, which is kind of sad and a shame because I watched a lot of films so much time. Oh, and I will be referring to them as inner frames from now on. So the first thing I noticed was that these inner frames could be created or formed with anything. A simple door frame, a window, something in the foreground, the background maybe, or even light, or the lack thereof. What about humans? They can form frames too. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> the most common shapes used are squares and rectangles, although triangles and circles are also frequently used. If you take a quick look around your environment, I'm sure you'll find plenty of examples of these shapes. Tiles, cupboards, buildings, wheels, lamps. Most things man-made are symmetrical. Our everyday lives are dominated by symmetry and geometry, even if we don't notice that they are there. But it is all just aesthetic. They do not impact or add anything to our lives besides being visually pleasing. In film, however, they can be used for so much more. Inner frames add depth to the image through use of both foreground and background elements at the same time. Since it is a compositional technique, it inherently creates more balanced, interesting, and aesthetically pleasing images. Inner frames can be used to limit the information that the audience receives. If the camera is looking into a room through a doorway, but not actually in the room, the audience can only see as much of the room as the doorway reveals. They can be used to cut the characters off from the rest of the world, to isolate them in their own frame. To draw the eye to a particular point of focus. To show the helplessness of a situation, their world closing in on them. To separate characters. Or to connect them. To reduce the space inside the frame in order to visually strengthen the image. And sometimes, they can be used as symbols, a representation of an idea, feeling, or opportunity. Now let's break down an example. Towards the end of the 1948 film, The Bicycle Thieves, the main character, Antonio, finds one of the titular thieves and confronts him. The thief has a convenient moment of weakness, causing the local community, his neighbors, to rally around him, blaming Antonio for his distress. After a policeman is called to the scene, Antonio, his son Bruno, and the policeman search the thief's home. When they find nothing, it becomes very apparent to both the audience and Antonio that even though we know it is the thief that stole his bike, Without evidence, Antonio is not going to get any justice. At this moment of realization, the policeman makes Antonio look out the window at the street below. The thief is surrounded by friends and family, a circle of protection, reinforcing this idea of the helplessness and difficulty of Antonio's situation. The subsequent shot of them in the window, small and surrounded by a lot of negative space, with Antonio's face half hidden, only adds to this. He is almost ashamed and can barely face the crowd waiting for him. This all culminates in the next shot. In the background of the shot, in the center of the frame between the characters, a woman carrying a child slowly closes her windows while the policeman explains that he can't do anything to help Antonio. This woman is the community, representing them and the way they feel about these intruders. Outsiders. They are no longer welcome. She shuts them out. Now this was just one example of how to use this technique. There are many more. Some I listed at the beginning of the video, and others I didn't. 
The usage of a frame within a frame isn't as prevalent in popular contemporary cinema as they were in earlier cinema. Since shots have become more dynamic and shorter, it is harder to incorporate it into the visual language of the films, at least effectively. They seem to be more effective when used in longer, more static or slower moving shots. That is not to say that in a frame in commercial film is dead, it's just that except for a handful of commercial directors like Paul Thomas Anderson, who frequently uses inner frames, or Wes Anderson, whose style is symmetry, inner frames seem to be more prevalent in smaller art house or commercial art house affairs. Which is a shame, because they are a very effective filmmaking technique that should be used more often. They are ways to subtly show the audience something without having to tell them. One of the best ways to convey information. I hope you found this to be informative. Let me know in the comments what you thought. I would love to hear it. My name is Brandon. Thank you for watching.